Hello and welcome to the Ventura Rock Spot. I'm Jeff Donovan and I'll be your host. The Ventura Rock Spot is a monthly program featuring original musicians from or traveling through Ventura, California. Please be sure to check out the website at VenturaRockspot.com where you can see all the past episodes or learn about becoming a feature artist yourself. Uh, if you're ever wondering what's going on with the music scene in Ventura, please be sure to check out VenturaRocks.com for all the latest information. So on this episode, we have with us Louis Cruz Beltran. Thanks for being with us, Louis. It's nice to be here. Good to see yeah. you, too. So, so listen, uh, let's just start right off. Uh, you've been a professional musician for quite a while now. Yep. And uh, for those of our viewers who are not familiar with, familiar with your work, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started, and where this journey's taken you? Well, Jeff, I got started, probably the, the initial point was with um, at home. Um, my mother it was a great singer, and uh, she would have us sing. My brothers, I have, a, I have a large family. And we used to sing, and she'd catch us singing in unison, and she would scold us. <laughs> she said, no, we, we harmonize in this home. So she taught us early to, to uh, develop harmony and singing, first, second, third, and even added some other cool cultural stuff that I had never heard before. But it's been helpful in my career. Okay, but I eventually started playing professionally probably when I was around 19 or 20 years old. And then I got a tour to, to go to Los, to Los Angeles. I picked up a tour there. Sergio Mendez's conga player turned me on to an audition. Uh, two weeks later, I was on Wilshire Boulevard getting my passport, and I was traveling all over the world playing percussion. Had the opportunity to go to the uh, um, School of Percussion, uh, Percussion in Paris, France, and studied. Uh, I was not um, a student, so to say, but I was an invited guest. Um, and I, I, I met a lot of great, great world international drummers from tabla drums to conga drums, the djembe, all of them. So that, that's been kind of my history, along with playing concerts, you know, all my life, practically. Right, right. Okay, great. Well, Liz, on that note, uh, why don't we take a look at one of your videos and we can familiarize the audience with your work. Uh, this one is one of your originals called uh, Muave Muave. Did I get that right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, mueve, so mueve, mueve, which means move it, move it. All right. Well, uh, let's play that now. And... Uh, after it's done, we can get a little detail on it afterwards. So, all right, sounds good. All right, here we go.
All right. Well, that was really great. I uh, really enjoyed that. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about that, about the video and how that came to be, or the song or the music? Well, Mueve Mueve, which means move it, move it, is a, a, a uh, upbeat uh, montuno, what we call montuno in Cuban rhythm, uh, Caribbean rhythm. It's the, it's the, it's a style that allows the pianist to do solos, uh, very much jazzy and, and, and co incorporating all the various types of, um, of uh, progression and chords. The rhythm, of course, is done in a mixture of a songo, tumbao, and all these names may, may be familiar to you because I know you're a musician. You might be very aware of them, but a lot of people, I wish I could explain, excuse me, you know, um, play them for them in person. And I hope to do that someday, but that's the rhythm that I'm doing. And um, everyone is kind of like in this groove in this clave groove, which is a different clave, which is American clave is more or less four, four. The Latin salsa clave is usually in three, two or two, three, but it is done in a four, four pattern. And that pattern takes two measures to complete. So the music is, is based upon rhythm, uh, um, the tumbao, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and um, it's one of the many styles of music that I do when I do my shows. I do, you know, the rock, uh, the R&B and rock um, stuff by Santana and stuff by uh, Tito Puente and mm -hmm. all of the great percussionists, Ray Barreto, um, Willie Bobo, um, Herbie Hancock, great, great uh, Latin jazz artists, uh, Poncho Sanchez and mm -hmm. Pete Escovito and Sheila E, some of their tunes. They are very dear friends of mine. And so I, I incorporate my rhythm in that. And, and I think that song right there would be perfect, especially you being a guitarist. You probably could have done some really nice licks in that tune. Yeah. It would sound I, like a... I, I really like the song. But uh, your point uh, actually brings me to uh, my next question. So, you know, you're, you're most well known for Latin jazz. But I know, also, I, I know that you're fluent with other genres and specifically how they're connected together. So can you, can you talk a little bit on that? But R&B, rock and roll, country which I love all that style. And, and that kind of music uh, made me have to do what many artists have done when they are uh, you know, so in love with a certain style and genre like I was with Latin jazz and salsa music. I had, in order to satisfy my wallet a bit, you know, I had to go ahead and, and follow the, and mixing the, the, the rock and roll and the jazz and, and the reggae music with the rhythms and the style that I had. And it's been working very well. I was actually been, pretty much employed for the last 35, 40 years, you know, so I'm doing all right. Right. a decision. Uh, yeah. Does anything stand out about you, Ventura? You know, you, why, do you, why do you like playing out here so much? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, it's really, it's really cool because I love the weather, of course. Uh -huh. you know, and, uh, we have great weather, yes. Yeah, you do. The beach is right there. The evenings are nice. And um, I have a lot of relatives in, Be in uh, Santa Barbara area, so it's close, and we kind of meet there halfway, you know. And we have a great time. It's, it's more of a family uh, um, reminiscent place for me. So I love playing there. And then on top of it, you know, I get to, to do uh, concerts there and I've, I've enjoyed it very much so. So nice. it's a really, I like the people there too. They are very receptive to uh, an eclectic kind of attitude, the art, uh, the music, the, the whole um, style of Ventura really turns me on, man. I like it out there. That's great. That's great. Um, so I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the creative process, about, about how you work when you're writing a song. Do you, you start with the lyrics and go with the music or you go with the music first and then come up with the lyrics or is it, is it different every time? You know, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg, right? <laughs> well, it's very difficult to answer that question. But the majority of times my, my music is based on some of the very... Um, slight nuances of the percussion has notes, believe it or not. And, and for some reason, it just seems to allow me to write melodies and I get the melody from the percussion and the feel that I want. And then I start to create the verses, start to organize the composition in terms of the A, B uh, parts, you know, whether I'm gonna modulate or, or do bridge, doing some percussion breaks. So all of that is, um, it, it, it begins with either a, 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 a picking up a, a voice or a chord or a progression from anyone. It could be, it could be Bach, it could be Japan, it could be, it could be um, 
anybody from George Harrison, the Beatles to um, the Who, uh, Kiss, it's whatever I'm listening to. Or what I usually do is I, I have my pianist or uh, someone that is, has an instrument, like a guitar or something like that, and we'll develop it upon my you know direction. Right. Um, I'll call out the chords or what I'm feeling and so forth. And there are cases when I will, you know, um, have it co-written with someone mm -hmm. or they understand that it is all original ideas and concept come from me as most of my music is. Right. Okay. Well, uh, on that note, uh, we got another video for our viewers and uh, this one actually uh, features a little bit of a percussion solo in the beginning of it. Um, and I, I think that they will completely understand just what you were talking about when you say you, you hear the notes in your percussion. you tell us a little bit about that video and uh, how that came to be well i, I lost about uh 200 calories on that song okay? <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough one man but um 
this this particular song is is a, a montuno, uh, a, what we call descarga, which is created as a kind of a jam session, but organized. It's not just play whatever you want. In the beginning, I'll do a little uh, uh, format of, of percussion riffs and showing speed and showing the development and all of the various types of rudiments that are involved in the in the Afro-Cuban drum. So I'll do that. And uh, that's usually called, that section is usually called uh, Diana. We call it Diana in the uh, Cuban style uh, where the percussion comes in and there's little chanting and talking and calling out. That's what it is. You're calling out all the other percussionists in the, in your, in your, uh, um, neighborhood and and it's, that's the idea of the song that diana is la, 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 la. a lot of that came that style uh, was interpreted kind of commercially by uh ricky ricardo you know desi arnaz mm -hmm. and he did his thing, you know. <laughs> i grew up oh, yeah. <laughs> oh see i'm home <laughs> and all that kind of stuff it was a he actually influenced and helped to develop a lot of uh understanding of uh music it was more you know, a lot of it was commercial and and, and um, uh, very very uh, stylized, but it was it was a style too that he also incorporated in there that was uh, very legit. You know, he was a very good good musician. He was a mm -hmm. great entertainer. Yeah. And um, Lucille Ball and Desi, they did a wonderful thing uh, as far as you know. Once again, artists bring together people in this world. It showed that you know a Latino. And a, and a uh, um, Anglo woman can actually have a beautiful relationship and have the art form involved, the music, the laughter, the, the being able to, to um, exist showed America, this is what we're really all about. America really should be like this. We shouldn't even, we shouldn't consider, you know, what our ethnic background is, but that we're Americans and we come from various types of uh, backgrounds and it's it's all cool. We put it together, and it is really a great salad. Oh, great, great. So um, so um, I want to move on to an, another aspect of your career, which is that you've been active in teaching and hosting workshops for the youth. Well, Jeff, you know the 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 passion and the inspiration comes from as I grew a little bit more mature in music and life, and you know musicians tend to have to focus a lot. They don't have to, but a lot of us tend in our young young years tend to be very self-focused in many ways because we're writing our own stuff. We want to get out there. There comes a time when you start to, you know, evaluate and do your inventory of life. And I started to take note of the people that helped me in my career. And I decided that I would love to go to some of these schools. I was invited to do concerts. That's how it started. I was going to, to universities and colleges and elementary schools. And, um, I was noticing that the arts programs were, were diminishing. And it was really sad. And on one stage I went in the back and they had all these music books and music stands and instruments full of dust. They had canceled out the music department. And I thought that was just devastating. Sure. And it inspired me to want to get involved. I, I actually, to make a long story short, if it's not too late, <laughs> is that uh, people in the, in the curriculum started to ask me if I would be interested in uh, doing some of these um, workshops and uh, going to the schools, the target areas like South Central, mm -hmm. East Los Angeles, and I and I would go there and clandestinely I would teach because if you go in as a teacher, you know it could be kind of you know boring. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about uh, the ambassadors of musicians and artists and school in the school system to teach our young children discipline and and so forth is that we allow them to, to, they will listen and pay attention because we have an art form. So when I take my congas, you know, I take my congas, and my percussion, and I, I show the relationship, as I mentioned earlier about Ricky and, well, I should say Desi and, and, and Lucille, what our relationship in music is. You know, did you know some of the black students, I would look at them, I said, did you know that a lot of this music comes from Mexico and from Puerto Rico and they speak Spanish and just like here, you know, what, you know, you, yes. and did you know the Mexicans and the Puerto Ricans and the, and the Europeans, all of us here in this class, that a lot of our music comes from Africa? So it brings together this whole concept that we can, we start to realize that we have a lot in common rather than uh, 
things that we don't have in common. And, and I, I like to capitalize on that subject. And it works very well. And I love doing it. And I continue to do it. How, how long have you been doing it? Oh, my gosh. Um, I think my hair was just about starting to turn gray. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago doing oh. it for many years yeah well, i would say 15 20 years you know uh, out there working with kids and and uh, developing you know this relationship uh racial tension going in these places with music you know wow. our instrument our weapons are music the yeah. universal language yeah so that's yeah. Great. um so okay on uh, another topic is um you've uh, been stuck in this pandemic along with the rest of us. And uh, how, how has that affected you, your performances? Yeah, how, how have you been keeping busy during, during all of this? You no, know, it hasn't affected me personally. I've never come down with the, with the COVID. Uh, however, it has affected. Um, my family has not had it, thank God. And, uh, but some friends and musicians uh, that I knew are no longer with us because of it. Right. And so I, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm deeply in, in um, condolences to all those families and all the people that have lost their lives with this. And I think that what we're doing right now and slowly coming back to it, it's, it's a good thing. But the time that I had off, not actually out there performing, um, allowed me to spend a lot of time, again, analyzing my life, my music, my family. And um, it has helped me in that way. You know. Something about human beings, we could, if we really stop to think about it, we can take a tragedy and turn it into something that seems to be a little bit more um, adaptable. Uh, musicians have a tendency to take stuff like the blues, you know, and write beautiful songs, mm -hmm. take beautiful uh, Latin music and folk music uh, from the Appalachians, from everywhere. You get the folk people singing, and it lifts them and it's given me a time to do a lot of self analyzation and writing a lot of music right. and uh, spending time with my family and other musicians. We talk a lot and we write together and we, we've been taking advantage of this time. Right. Are, are, are you back playing now in, in live performances? Um, I, that is slowly coming back. And it's been a musical drought for me mm. because of this uh, totally understandable, but I should be back working again. And, uh, I keep my prayers that they don't call in the last minute and say, you know how that can happen. And yeah. it happened to me in the past. I was supposed to do a concert in Pasadena, several, uh, some stuff in Ventura and so forth that had, had to call me and let me know. Uh, I got the news that we got to hold off. So yeah. yeah, we were, we had the same predicament with, with my band is that, uh, you know, nobody quite knew when it was going to end and we had yeah. gigs booked and they kept calling us and saying, well, sorry, we have to reschedule or cancel this one. So yeah, it's been kind of a trying time, but you know, um, it's, it's allowed me, it's allowed me to go online and, and also some of the students that I had that I didn't have time to actually, you know, um, get into uh, the percussion and teaching them the, the various rhythms, this time allowed me to do it more on video and Zoom with students. Right. So in that way, I make a living, you know, keeping it going that way. Right. And uh, other, other ways too, I write music for other people. And so it's been, it's been, a, it's been an uphill, but it's kind of like, I've, I've, I've found the best to, to pull out of it too. So right. this, is, this is the way we do it, man. When we have to, we, we find a way out, you know? Yeah. So, I, you know, along with your music, I understand that you also do some comedy. Uh, it's not that I do comedy. I, I, my mother used to tell me when I was a young man and I was interested and she knew I was getting interested in, in the entertainment field music. She uh, stressed to me that the uh, vaudeville experience and how that whole era was about people dancing, singing, playing an instrument you know, doing a variety of things and, and, and having yourself prepared in case someone calls you that you're ready for anything. So it, it brought to my attention that I need to learn how to do a variety of things. I was very um, uh, touched by uh, Richard Pryor and uh, um, Eddie Murphy and you know, all the great comedians, you know, in, in our time. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I 
I guess as an artist, you know, we, we look at the timing and the rhythm of everything that we, we perceive. And so I saw a lot of that in there and I said, yeah, I'm gonna try that. I think it's something that I need when I go and do gigs, I should have some one-liners or some <laughs> funny stuff, you know, to kind of go in between the songs. Cause sometimes, yeah. you know, something happens, a string breaks or right. you know, yeah. you know, something happens. So I, I just fell into that. And in some ways it's been working for me, you know? And uh, so I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't stop doing it. It's just something I do naturally now. And it's just part of my show and, but it doesn't interfere with the music, man. You know, they, they work together. Right. All right. Great. Well, um, listen, where can our viewers uh, uh, find you online? Um, Jeff, you can go to www.louiecruzbeltran and Louis is spelled L-O-U-I-E. Um, and that's the way it's on there. It's uh, louiecruzbeltran.com. And all of my stuff and music, you know, there's all of these various outlets that you can go to. You know, you know how these computers are. Right. I'm not too savvy on computers. I just got used to the ballpoint pen, man. You know, <laughs> so it, it's something that I don't really know how to explain sometimes. But they can find my stuff there. I have a lot of information, and um, they should enjoy it. All right. I have a lot of artwork too. I love I love to paint, and um, so okay. I do that. Great. Well, um, that's about all the time we have for this episode. Uh, is there any final comments you'd like to give to the viewers? No, my prayers are out to all of the musicians and, and uh, families that have been put on hold with this, this um, horrible COVID. And uh, this pandemic has been hitting hard. And I just pray that we all come out of it, uh, you know, and continue to live life the best we can. I ask young young musicians and artists to to study their their trade, study their craft, and uh, try to be as versatile uh, in their beginning stages of musicianship. And eventually, they will find which one they really want to major in. Mm -hmm. But I think it's good to pick up on all styles. Nice. All right. Okay. Well, that concludes this episode of Ventura Rock Spot. Uh, thank, thank you, you. Louis, Thank you for being with us. It was a pleasure having you. It's a pleasure being here. Thank right. you, Jeff. Great. And uh, I'd also like to thank our producer, GWC Productions, and also our partners, our Ventura TV and VenturaRocks.com. And thanks for all of you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.